Now that we set up our API where it returns a session ID whenever we call it, now let's set up the Angular side, the client side, where we retrieve the session ID and then send the user off to the Stripe checkout page so they can complete their order. So what we're trying to accomplish is when the user clicks on a button, we'll make our API call. And you could do it from the order now, but what I'm thinking of doing is actually moving it into the continue to checkout. So when the user clicks on this link, we'll call our new API. So we'll be working inside of four files in our Angular application. So inside of the spa, and you wanna open up the index HTML, we'll need to pull in Stripe here. And then we'll be working inside the checkout, and that's inside the membership module. So the checkout TS file. And when the user clicks on a button from our, our membership checkout component, then we'll need to call our service to make our API call. So I'll go ahead and open that. And then the I membership will need to change around our model a little bit. So open that up as well. And let's start inside the index HTML. And right at the top within the head tag, we'll pull in the Stripe library. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not using a package manager to bring in Stripe. The reason is, is we always want a up-to-date version of Stripe. And if they ever make any changes to the Stripe library, whenever we reload the application, we'll get a up-to-date version of the Stripe library. So that's the reason I'm not using a package manager to bring in Stripe. And that's it for the HTML file. Next, let's make our API call, and we'll be doing that from within the service. So we'll jump in there. And the first thing we want to do here is bring in Stripe. So I'll add that up here at the top. We'll declare it. So whenever we want access to Stripe, we'll just call on this. And now we're ready to make our API call and we'll make our API call from within the request membership session method already set up. And we're already passing in the price ID. And I'll replace this console log here with my own snippet. So here we're gonna make an HTTP call and I'm already bringing in the HTTP client from Angular within the constructor up here. And it's gonna be a post. We're gonna get back a I session. We'll need to change around this in a second, but I'll go ahead and I'll bring it in. And we're calling our URL. And this, this matches what we did in Postman. If we go back to Postman, so we're calling localhost 5001 API payments create checkout. And this is gonna give us back a session ID and we need to pass in the price ID. And we're already doing that if we go back here. So we're passing in the price ID and then we're gonna get back the session with the session ID inside of it. And we're gonna just send it off to the method that I already have set up right here. So let's set up this though. We'll add the session ID to the I session and that is inside the I membership. And inside of the I session, I already have that set up as well. We'll just add a property in here. And that is gonna be the session ID as a string. And that's all we need to do in there jump back into the membership. And that should take care of the error right here. You shouldn't have an error there anymore. So now let's set up our redirect. So when we get a back a session ID, we wanna redirect them to the Stripe checkout. And we'll do that from within this method here. So I'll paste another snippet. And here we're gonna set up our publishable key for Stripe and then redirect them using the Stripe redirect to checkout and pass in the session ID. That should send them off to the Stripe checkout page. So let's go into the Stripe dashboard and get our publishable key. Inside of the dashboard, if you go to your home dashboard, you should find your publishable key right here. Make sure you do not pick your secret key because if you do, it won't work. And also you never wanna have the secret key on the client side. You wanna keep that on the server in a very secure place. So just make sure you select your publishable key copy that, jump back into the project, and we'll replace this. In the next couple of videos, I'm gonna show you a better way of adding your key here. What we'll do is we'll add that within the environment page instead of doing it here. But for now, I'll just add it here just to keep it simple for this video. Now there's one more thing we wanna do here. So here is our product right here. What we wanna do is get the product ID and the correct price ID as well. We'll go back in the dashboard and get that. Back here in the dashboard, we'll go to the products and the product we created in the last couple of videos. 
and I'm after two things, the product ID. We don't really need this. We're not gonna be using it throughout the course, but I'll go ahead and add it since we got the product within our service. And then the important thing is the price ID. We need this as well. So I'll copy this, add this within our service. So the product ID goes into the ID. And then the important part, the price ID, this is what's gonna get passed into this method later on. So we wanna make sure we get this one correct. We'll jump back into our dashboard and copy the product ID. And we'll add that here. And that's all we need to do for our setup work within our service. So you wanna make sure your service looks like this. So let's save this and jump into our components now. So we'll jump into the membership checkout component. And a lot of this already has set up. So I'm already bringing in the service that we were just working inside of. And then within the ng on it, we get the membership. Now you could make an API call, like call Stripe to get the membership or call your own database to get the membership. But I just set this up within the service right here. So that's how we're getting the membership and displaying it to the view by this way. And then when the user submits the form, we grab the price ID out of the membership, passing that in right here, sending it off to our service, then later on redirecting them off to the checkout page. And if you wanna check out the HTML, that is right here. And here is where they uh, check out. So when they click on this button, I have this hidden input field that holds the price ID. And when they click on this button, we send that ID off to our service redirecting the user. So that's pretty much it with the component. Now we did all of our setup work. Let's test the application, make sure everything's working. We should be redirected to the Stripe checkout. Make sure you restart everything. And let's check this out in the browser. Let's refresh the application, make sure everything's up to date and let's purchase our awesome membership plan. So yes, I would like this awesome membership plan. And now when we click on this button, we should be redirected to the Stripe checkout. So let's try it. And we are. And as you can see, our styles that we set up, I think it was in video one, are all showing up. Like our image for the product is showing up. And the reason it knows about the price is because we passed in the price ID. So that's how Stripe knows what information to put in here for us. Now, if there's any failures, if we hover on this, as you can see down there in the bottom left corner, we're going to go back to localhost 4200 failure. The reason Stripe knows about that URL is because we set that within our API. We did that in the last video. So if we click on that, we'll get sent back to our failure page of our application. And if we go try to purchase it again, so we'll go through this process again, and if we're successful, then we'll get sent back to the success page of our application. Again, we defined that within the API in the last video. So let's successfully buy something. Coders dot com and then if you want to put in a valid test credit card put in 4242 and a valid expiration date like any later date so 0123 and then any number here any name here John Doe and it doesn't matter what you put here either so we should successfully buy this membership so hit subscribe and now we are redirected back to the membership created page, the success page. Now this would also reflect within our dashboard, our Stripe dashboard. If we go back here and go to customers, we should have a customer in there now, and we do. And then also if we go to payments, we should have one in here as well. So we have one membership plan now, and that was the email we just entered in. So now that we're able to successfully send the customer to the Stripe checkout page. Let's clean up our code a little bit, do some refactoring, and we'll do that in the next video.